Today, the family of Gabby Petito, the young girl on your screen, remember her, the 22-year-old who was murdered by her boyfriend? They filed a $50 million wrongful death lawsuit against the Moab City Police Department, alleging it was their negligence that led to Gabby's death. I have Brian Stewart, who's the family's lawyer, with us. Brian, I want to show the clip of tape that the lawsuit rests on in terms of what the police did. Let's play it. I didn't invite him all morning, and, and he wouldn't let me in the car before. And then Why wouldn't I, he let you in the car? Because he, 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 he told me I needed to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm perfectly calm. I'm calm all the time. And he really stresses me out. We're going to have... We're trying to get a local uh, victims advocacy group called Sea Haven to get him a hotel for the night, so that you can have the van. Because they won't give you the hotel because you're the you're the one who is the primary aggressor. Brian Stewart, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, your allegation is based on that interaction. What? Well, thank you for having me, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about uh, Gabby's situation and the uh, and what their family is trying to accomplish by by filing this lawsuit. Uh, the, uh, the the family uh, believes that that these officers knew what the law was. They knew that it required uh, an arrest and a separation uh, at the scene, but but that these officers uh, looked for loopholes in, in order to to not, to not follow the law. Um, they ignored Gabby's uh, injuries. They ignored witnesses, the 911 call that said that Brian was the primary aggressor and that, that he had injured her. When she indicated uh, to police officers that she, he had grabbed her face and cut her on her cheek, they ignored, ignored that as well and just kept right on asking for and coaching her to, to say what they needed her to say so that they wouldn't have to do anything. Counselor, and the, the pushback will be, may she rest in peace. Gabby told them that she was the aggressor and that she was worried and that he was the victim. Now, we both know that a lot of women in distressed situations will do that because they're afraid of what happens otherwise. But her telling them that, did that not force them into the position that they were in? And if not, why not? No, the, in fact, you're right. The, the training the police officers receive for investigating domestic violence situations tells them exactly that, that often the victim will take blame, will, uh, will do, do and say what they can to defuse the situation and make law enforcement go away. But their duty is to, to investigate, to investigate the facts. And if they had done that, they would have learned from witnesses and the 911 caller and that, that Brian was the primary aggressor. They would have documented Gabby's injuries uh, and asked her about whether or not Brian had hit her before. If they would followed their protocol, their lethality assessment protocol for understanding her situation, they would have known that Brian was the primary aggressor. But they, they didn't do that investigation. They were looking for a, a way out of, of the situation. So, Counselor, we're going to stay on this. We're going to follow the suit. I know uh, the family. I know where they're from. I know it's not just about the money for them. I know it's about change and changing the protocols. Uh, so we'll be following this litigation. And I appreciate you teeing it up for us. Absolutely. And they thank you, Chris, as well. All right. Send my best, please. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.